Yes, greetings, life optimizers. Success leads your daily epiphany. Now, I've been following uh, Dr. Joe Dispenser lately. And I'm, I'm Dispenza is the dispensary of Dr. Joe Dispenser. And um, this dude is, wow, he's an incredible guy. Um, healed himself. He found a truck the once and uh, told he could never ever walk again. He basically had to heal up, heal his, his spinal cord. Um, and now, ever since then, he's just gotten into, um, into into the physics of all of that. The guy's super bright. He's uh, a doctor of note. And um, so I've been following him, and I've been loving what he's been saying. And this morning, I just listened to something, and then I got kind of hit by the, uh, the inspiration plank. <laughs> I fell out of the inspiration tree and hit every branch on the way down. Um, and he was talking of, um, I mean, this is awesome, because like John Mayer, the musician, says, I'm bigger than my body gives me credit for. We're actually um, more non-physical than we are physical. And if you don't really give that much thought, we need to keep reminding ourselves of that. So now, what was shared this morning was basically how everything here exists. I mean, we're physical and we're non-physical. Hmm. And everything exists like that. Scientists that have wanted to prove that light is a particle when they've stood there with their, with that with that uh, intention, they've proven that light acts as a particle and prove a uh, particle. Similarly, when they've got other guys that have said no, it's a wave. It has acted as a wave and it's proven them to be correct. So, this is bloody interesting. Now, now how does this affect us in ways that we can optimize our ways and our thinking and our consciousness? So. <clears throat> Everything then exists as physical, non-physical. You've got matter and you've got non-matter. You have particle and wave. If anybody here is one, wondering why, you know, I try and do affirmations and I try and do stuff and, and they don't really bloody work for me. I'm not really getting any kind of desired change that I seek. And trust me, I've been one of them for plenty, plenty years. What came and smacked me between the eyes was how all of our thinking is pretty much uh, practice thinking we have 60 plus thousand thoughts a day and it's pretty much all rehearsed stuff and it's basically just built on of reflections of what has happened to us in the past um, so there's nothing ever really new so everything is pretty much and pretty much proven that 90% of what we think is kind of irrelevant redundant and, uh, and BS anyway so now we kind of are addicted to that old pattern of thinking we are constantly replaying our old thoughts. The, the, the mind loves to, to, to replay stuff. It's very habitual, especially the more unconscious, subconscious mind. So, we find ourselves in, uh, whenever we in, there's the four different states. You've got your, um, your, your beta state, which is pretty much your conscious state. You, well, I'm in it right now. I'm thinking logically. I'm basically looking um, at using all my senses. So it's pretty much all the physical kind of stuff. Then you get your alpha state, which is your more day, your more daydreaming kind of state. Man, favorite place. <laughs> um, where we kind of just slightly tap out. You've then got your theta state, where you are, it's between the line of sleep and, and wakefulness, but you, you're, not, you, you're not the hero there. And then, um, then, then your your unconscious state. So basically, what is being said is now, in order to get out of the old thought patterns, because thoughts become things. We all hear that. So your think, think and grow rich. Everything's about. Tony Robbins says, um, your your change of success is eighty percent mindset, twenty percent um, uh, a strategy, physical doing stuff. Um, now, uh, Bob Proctor, he goes one step further, he even says it's 95% mindset, 95% strategy, um, physical doing, um, mechanics. So what we've got to become conscious of now is getting out of the place of our addiction to the, uh, the beta state thinking. And we need to get more into that alpha state. And this is pretty much what all the uh, gurus and mystics, everyone talks about, um, meditation it's basically interrupting that pattern of thought stopping that whole habitual line of thinking and allow for new thoughts to come in so now this is the interesting part because now in the quantum basically it's it's infinite potential 
Uh, if anyone's seen the movie What the Bleep, they'll know that it, uh, all options exist all at once. So there, it's infinite potential and we're just basically a very focused point of conscious in just one of them. So let's just recap quickly. So we have the two states. We have the particle, which is the physical, and we have the non-particle, which is the wave. So we could possibly say that body, physical, um, spirit, non-physical, okay, more the wave. Thoughts, um, wave. Right. So, here's where it gets interesting. Not just interesting, it gets bloody exciting. Because there is that, that wave part, is just like our thoughts, there's, is consciousness. So basically you can call it, religions will refer to it as, as God, as creator, the universe, um, but they, it, it's more than, we always personify it as a person because we're trying to relate it from our five senses, from our, from our beta state. Get more to the alpha and theta because it isn't something physical. It is, it is, it is it, divine intelligence. It is infinite intelligence. It is, um, and it is basically what created all of this, the, who created the particle, is what holds it all together. So basically what we've got to do is find ways of interrupting that old pattern of the, uh, the, the beta state thinking and consciousness and get out of that interrupted, disrupted, get more into that state of the, the alpha state, which is more the daydreaming. Because when you're in the daydreaming, the alpha state and the, and the theta state, you're no longer really living in the physical realm anymore. You're now crossing over to the more, to the more non-physical, to the wave. And that's where all that beautiful um, infinite intelligence is. That's where all that, that infinite possibilities and, and, and potential is. And that is normally when we find we get inspiration while we're driving in our car, alpha state, or when we're doing dishes or our mundane tasks that our body is so learned that we can do it without having to consciously think about it. We then plug in to that. And that's where we uh, get all these brilliant ideas and we all think, well, I'm so clever in my head because I've got that. But meanwhile, we just plug it in to that the wave, not the particle part of ourselves, where there's infinite potential and that's where uh, inspiration comes to us. Now, how pretty exciting is that? Now, if that isn't a, uh, <laughs> a uh, doesn't make you want to go and, and meditate or daydream or, or become a little more aware of our constant habitual bloody past thinking and start allowing ourselves and opening ourselves to new thoughts, new ideas, new plans, and opening ourselves for inspiration. Today's daily epiphany. How cool was that? I wish you all a very inspired day <laughs> with non-habitual thinking and new ideas, new thoughts, new inspiration. Peace out, much love. The Big Cigar.